Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture in Go video. In today's episode, we're covering extensibility. So what is extensibility? According to software architecture, the hard part, extensibility is the ability to add additional functionality as the service context grows. In other words, extensibility means adding or updating features without significant changes to the existing code base. A typical example of extensibility is a payment service that supports multiple payment methods. This means the service supports credit cards, gift cards, and PayPal transactions, just to mention something. And because of a well-implemented code base, it can be updated to add support for other payment services, such as Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, without too much effort. Building systems that allow extensibility requires unprofessional experience. This is because you need to envision changes that may happen in the future. The critical bit about extensibility is to know when to extract types, how much instability the packages have, and the different techniques to achieve extensibility. I already covered measuring instability. The link to that video is in the description. Feel free to check that out. Specifically in Go, two foundational techniques, interface types, and dependency injection allow us to build extensible architectures as well as the Go toolchain and other tooling that we need to build the final artifacts. In this example, it will be Docker Compose. Let's put all of this in practice and update our to-do microservice to update the search feature. As usual, the link to the code is in the description of this video. Feel free to check that out whenever you have some free time. As a reminder, the search feature works as follows. Once a record is created or updated, an event is published via a message broker. This event is then consumed by an indexer process that updates the values in Elasticsearch. The core implementation is using Kafka. Now the interesting part, let's assume our leadership is asking us to support different types of message brokers such as RabbitMQ and even Redis. How do we update our service so it works nicely with either of those three options? Kafka, which we currently have, RabbitMQ and Redis to generate artifacts that could be deployed as needed. So what is needed to allow multiple brokers then? The steps will follow are 1. Implement a new interface type called Message Broker Publisher. This will represent any of the supported brokers. Implement a function New Message Broker Publisher. This function will return a Message Broker Publisher that behind the scenes uses the explicit implementation of the broker. In this first step, because we are refactoring, it will be using Kafka. This will pave the way for future implementations. Finally, we're going to break apart the current Docker Compose into three base, common, and explicit implementation. We will take advantage of the extends directive in Docker Compose to accomplish reusability. So in this example, what changed is the main package. We have a new type called message broker publisher that defines two methods, one called publisher, another one called close. Publisher returns a task message broker publisher that if you notice is coming from the service package. So this implementation of this to the microservice follows the typical three layers architecture. So you have a service, you have a repository, and then you have your handlers. The next thing that I did was to create a new file called Kafka. This is just so I know which implementation of the broker I'm referring to. This Kafka broker implements the interface that I showed you before. So it has the two methods right here, publisher and close, and it happens to return the explicit implementation of the producer. So to give you a little more of context, and you will be wondering why this is called producer and why this is called publisher, isn't those the kind of the same thing? Well, the reason being I'm using these two similar names is that the producer actually represents the Kafka producer from the Confluent Inc. implementation that happens to produce those events. There is an equivalent called consumer, and the publisher is the one that we use internally in our service, in the service package, to send the events that indicate a task was created, a task was updated, and a task was deleted. It's a way to differentiate the two, but in practice it's more or less the same. So, with that being said, if we go and open the compose files, you will notice that I have a compose file here, a compose Kafka here, as well as a compose common here. The way this works is the compose defines the services that happen to be used by all the implementation, no matter what. This includes memcached, Postgres, Jaeger, Vault, and obviously Elasticsearch. What we have defined in the compose common file is the basic configuration that we can extend using the extend directive that I mentioned before. So we can take advantage of some reusability. And finally, in the compose.kafka file, we have the actual implementation that refers to Kafka only. This means the server, the REST server, communicating to the Kafka broker, as well as the indexer that happens to be consuming those events from Kafka. But if you notice, that's why we have extends directive here that happens to reuse most of the definitions that we had in the common file, as well as the applicable for indexer too. And of course, any other services that happen to be needed for 
Kafka, which in this case will be Zookeeper and Kafka itself, and some setup that I added as well just to make it more useful when you're running the op command in Docker Compose. So let me show you how all of this works in practice. To build the images, you just have to use the typical Docker Compose build command. So you will run the build passing in the files, in this case will be the compose file, the one that indicates all the normal services, as well as the specific concrete Kafka implementation. This may take a little bit, so I'm going to fast forward all of this and then show you how we can see it in practice. It looks like all the containers are up, so we can test it using the Swagger UI. In this case, we just have to go to our URL. We can start creating some tasks. For example, we can say hello, and we can call it priority low. We can execute. We get a valid ID. You notice right here that the event was consumed by the indexer. So it's already indexed in the Elasticsearch process. So if we go back to the search, we can actually search it using the other endpoint. We try it out. We can use the description will be hello. We can get rid of these two arguments and we can execute it. And you will notice that it's already indexed by a different process via the broker. If you happen to use the put or delete, the same steps will happen. The indexer will be receiving those two events depending on which, which endpoint you're using and the record will be updated. So let's see how we can add a different broker other than Kafka. Okay, Kafka is completed. Let's do something similar for RabbitMQ. For this, the steps we need to follow are we need to start using build flags, implement the new message broker builder for RabbitMQ using the build flags only for RabbitMQ, implement the new Docker Compose to build and run the RabbitMQ base indexer, as well as we need to update the Docker files corresponding to Kafka and RabbitMQ to support the build tags. Let me show you. So, main itself is basically the same. However, with Kafka, what we added is a new build directive that we are going to be passing in when building the image. And similarly, we added a new RabbitMQ file that has a build directive right here that is indicative of RabbitMQ only. And if you notice, it follows the same kind of uh, style. There's a pro producer, a publisher, and it returns the specific configuration for the RabbitMQ implementation and whatnot. What I want to show you next is the Docker file that now was updated for the REST server image. It receives an argument uh, for Docker that we use to set the build flag for Go. This will determine what file to use, either Kafka or RabbitMQ or whatever the case may be in the future. So this is how we can build the different types of images depending on the message broker that we want to use. Of course, all of these also have their corresponding RabbitMQ. So the RabbitMQ, again, is using extents to take advantage of the common file and it defined its custom RabbitMQ. And if we go and do something similar and decide to use RabbitMQ in, instead of Kafka, it will go and build the image. All right, it looks like all the containers are up according to the metrics endpoint. So let's look at the Swagger UI one more time. Here we do the same thing. It's going to work the same way. Instead of using hello, we're going to use a world and we're going to change the priority to high. We create the record. If we go back to the logs, you will see that the RabbitMQ indexer received the created event, which is right here. And now the record could be searchable via the Elasticsearch implementation. So if we go back to the Swagger UI and we use the search endpoint, you will notice that now we can find it as normal as we did with the previous implementation. And that's it. This is extensibility in Go, a practical example. I know I went through all of this super quickly. I really didn't want this video to be two hours long. Just keep in mind that the foundational techniques are abstract out your types. Take advantage of interface types, take advantage of dependency injection, take advantage of the build tags. And if you're using Docker Compose, take advantage of the args, as well as the way they have to reuse Docker Compose files using the extends directive. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Take care. Stay safe. See you.